Just on the other side of the Carnival City Casino and Entertainment Complex, the cars left immediately after their 15-minute refuel break on the shorter loop of just more than 100 k's, and then again the longer second loop of almost 160. Luckily this time the drivers knew where they were going, which would help. <laughs> This time of the day, it had got a little drier and slightly more dusty. Meanwhile, Krobler and Jordan were going as hard as they could for as long as they could. The chips were certainly down. Cox and Pitchford were the car that the Nissan pit crew did an unbelievable job with. It looked like it was out for the count, but the boys in red came to the rescue, and it looked like the strong-willed Cox would have a chance of winning his championship after all. <laughs> Makaka Nene had a flat tyre in his second loop, but was still going well, although that did not last long. He and co-driver Henry Castain ran out of luck 8 k's from the finish line when they hit a ditch and damaged the gearbox. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Walks, Rob and Gareth had themselves a great drive and gone from ninth into the top five and were still picking off the teams in front of them. The Harper combination was also still right in the thick of things. Although Marsh and Whitehouse, their main competition in the class, were closing in and were picking up the pace on the last two loops themselves. Piazza Musso and Nav Okifuri in their Toyota Hilux had gone from 24th after day 1 to 12th. They were looking for their first win of the 2005 season. Ihu and Yap the Brain and their Toyota were giving a good account of themselves and were up into 12th place, a superb drive from a team who quietly go about their business. Schroeder was doing exactly as he told me at the start on day one, getting to the finish line in one piece to win the championship. Zane Pierce and his navigator Henny Forstler were battling mud in the radiator which caused some overheating problems, but they were soldiering on. <laughs> Meanwhile, fitness fanatic Duncan Foss and his co-Henny Terstecha nailed down the second fastest time on the third loop. Only 60 seconds behind Gerard Duplessis and Fadi Seches, who had two wins this season, but very little else in between. They won at Sun City and in Leidenberg at the Toyota Dealer 1000. Krobler, who won his first national championship title way back in 86, was still hoping to finish ahead of Cox by a big margin to defend his national title. The special class vehicles were certainly more suitable to the racing conditions and the route at the Ford Carnival City 400 because there were six of them in the top ten and even more after the first day's racing. But no one bothered to tell Alfie Cox and Ralph Pitchford that. They were streaking through the field on the third and fourth loops and were passing left, right and centre. As for the drying out, that was the case on most of the route but there were still one or two spots where the hoppers in their bat could show off their car handling skills. Hutchison and Ormerod were also still flying along, but they'd missed two marshal points on the route, and even as Evan was storming towards the finish line, he knew that that meant an exclusion from the results. <laughs> The two total motorsport porters, piloted by Variawa and Makhachanene respectively, had started chasing each other, but not long after Lady Luck would turn her back on Makhachanene and Kirstein. As for Marsh and Whitehouse, they were desperate to win the championship, and their pit crew were a very nervous bunch of supporters waiting for news from the route. Force was still going smoothly and very quickly. While 
the two de Browns were just happy to keep it on its wheels. Piazza Musa was by now leading Class D and he was aching to take his first win of the 05 season. On the other side of the coin, the lone Ford representative Schroeder was just looking for a finish to clinch the Class D championship, so he may have lost the battle here, but in the end, a win would give him the war. Barker and Birken in the Toyota Castrol Team SP were highly impressive and the car even more so in its first outing for the Japanese manufacturer. With pregnant skies again threatening Pierce and Foslu and their Toyota had moved into the top 10 in the production vehicle category and second in class. That's the sound of the ever-popular Landy with the two Moffats in control. It was rolling along nicely. Mark would eventually finish third in the Class F driver's battle. The patriotically coloured techno chair car of Rudy and Pierre von Hron surprised many pundits when it took sixth place in the special vehicle category. Bevan Bartolt and James Kennelly in their bat were finishing strongly and their third loop was one of the fastest of the day. It brought them an eighth place in the special vehicle section. At the finish line though, it was Gerard Duplessis and Fabi Sierges who got there first with just a few ticks under eight hours worth of racing. And winning the special vehicle category, Gerard Duplessis and Fabi Sierges in the Jumco. Well done. Their crew and supporters were very happy and maybe that's a bit of an understatement. A third win for them in 05. Can you go here on your last day? Okay? It was nice, it was rough. The last day I was a bit moe. I was a bit moe, a bit moe. The concentration was a bit moe. Yeah, and it was too hard. The weather made it too dark. It was too hard. And how was the last two rounds that you had to do in the morning? No, in the morning, the first loop was very nice. And the last last three was very better and better. Did you expect to come to the end of the day? No, no, we didn't expect to come to the end of the day. We didn't expect to come to the end of the day. And it must be nice to have to be a good spanner to get the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Second to appear in the camera's viewfinder was the red and white livery of Hannes Hobler's proudly South African Nissan hard body. But everybody then knew that the championship had come down to this, a wait for Alfie Cox. And the crowd was almost hushed as it waited for the final chapter of the 2005 season to play out. Arnes, uh, not quite sure of what the situation is yet, but uh, tell us about the drive first. Um, it was very tough. It was uh, 500 kilos, and I'll tell you, it had tested man and machine, you know. Um, what made it difficult this morning was that we were running in the real mud, you know, and um, we were looking for the road. So it slacked us down a bit, and we lost a bit of time, and uh, then we had a flat wheel as well. Uh, but I think it's a, it was a good ice drive and I enjoyed the day. The next car to appear was the motorite bat of Hutchison and Ormerod, but they were excluded after missing those vital marshal points. And then for the second race in a row, Clint Gibson and Marcel Trothuis surprised by taking a top three place and second in their own class. Clint, a uh, very good drive, obviously. You guys have really caught form in the last few races, Leidenberg and here as well. Uh, what's been the secret to success? We've, uh, we've got a very, very reliable package. Um, the car just works well. Great engine, great transmission, fantastic navigator. That's, I think that's where all that shit happens is the navigation. And then the wait was over. After the finest drive seen for a while, Cox came back from starting 53rd in the morning to finish fourth and winning the ABSA Off-Road Championship title by a slender three-point margin from Krobler. Okay. Okay. Oh, before you go, you must be stoked. Oh, I'll tell you what, it's been a controversial weekend. <laughs> and to end it like this, they say the harder you try, the luckier you get, but it's, it's just been fantastic. I mean, Ralph did a good job today, and sure, we were the underdogs this morning, but we've kept the hammer down all day, and uh, 
you know, it's worked out perfectly. You don't just give a championship away like that. Yesterday was just a big mistake to roll the car. But you know, that's what happens when you're under pressure. And uh, LB also, it makes two South African championships in one household, so you must have felt the pressure. Well, I tell you, my son, to win it at seven years old, he's put a lot of pressure on his dad. And <laughs> sure, I've, I've won many bark championships, but to take an overall car championship, and I, don't, I think we've made history by having two son and a father in the same family the same year. So we'll be going in February to the Motorsport Awards together in our tuxedo. So. LP, also, I think you have to pay tribute to the crew that put this car together because yesterday after you rolled it, it didn't look like it was going to go anywhere fast. No, I tell you what, the mechanics at Nissan have been fantastic the whole year. The car has been absolutely flawless and, you know, you can't win a championship without a good product. Obviously, Glenn has had his faith in me and also the mechanics have just done an absolute... So for them, this is one for them. Accolades for a team that did miracles. Next up, it was Class A Championship winners Terence Marsh and Michael Whitehouse. Terence, you look like one very happy camper there. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, it was unbelievably hard. It really was, uh, but we played the waiting game. Uh, we made one or two mistakes, but it, under the conditions, it was understandable. Uh, but uh, you know, it, it came to us in the end, you know. Well, how happy are you right now? Uh, ecstatic, uh, absolutely ecstatic. It's been long and hard work, and for everybody that's uh, behind us and backed us, it's, it's for everybody, this is great. For Paolo Piazzamuso and co-driver Oki Furi, it's been a whole season-long wait, but you know what they say, waiting makes it worth it. Go! Paolo, quick chat from you, how was the last loop? Oh, the last loop was great. Uh, just here near the end, we nearly got stuck because there's a car on the riverbed, so it was a hard stopping moment, but uh, apart from that, it was awesome. Uh, for the Cashel Tiara team, I think uh, we've got an excellent result. Thanks very much. From that point of view, where does this leave you in the championship as you sit in the car right now? I'm not sure. Uh, we have to check the calculations. Obviously, we had a bit of a torrid season, but uh, I'm happy to finish on a high note. Next up, it was the blue of Ford that crossed the finish line of the Ford Carnival City 400. And for Manfred Schroeder, it was a Is championship, that the championship win. championship for Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and what's that feel like? <laughs> um, very good. Uh, it was a very long day in the office. Um, I think it was one of the roughest routes we've done all year. Um, yeah, but the vehicle is amazing. I mean, we didn't have one problem, didn't have to get out once. We might have lost a panel or two, but um, yeah, perfect run. Well, several of the production cars had donated a few panels out there in the heat of the moment. The production vehicle's results and a win for Grobler, but a phenomenal drive from Cox. And to clinch the manufacturer's title, Duncan Foss made it three for three for the six-time champions. In the special vehicle class, it was Duplessis and Sierges with a quarter of an hour to spare over Gibson and Trithui, with the Harpers taking fourth. And the SA national title was won by just three points in the end. A fine showing for Ford in third, and Cronje and Birkin brought home the first Toyota. Marsh and Whitehouse will be calling themselves the defending SA champions in 2006 in the special vehicle class, and well-deserved it is too. And to wrap up the season, a 47-point win for Nissan over arch-rivals Toyota, and Ford a distant third. From the Ford Carnival City 400, I'm Arnold Getz saying thanks for watching.